I think we sometimes the good side of the human being, compassion or human affection, we simply take for granted and neglect about it. And we pay too much attention to material development or economy side of these things. So our potential somehow not have the chance to, to develop, grow. So I think time has come to show or to, to make clear it's our potential. I think inner spiritual development. For millions of his followers, he is the Holy Lord, gentle glory, defender of faith, ocean of wisdom. His message of compassion, selflessness and peace has made him a statesman for the troubled times. He calls himself a Buddhist monk but his deeds make him the face of peace. He is none other than His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Tenzin Gyatso. Dalai Lama are those beings who after having attained enlightenment and liberation from rebirth, opt for reincarnation voluntarily out of compassion for others in order to serve humanity. They are called the Buddha of Compassion or Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva. I come from a very remote area, northeast Tibet, northeast part of Tibet. My mother, both parents, illiterate. 6 July 1935, a boy was born to a peasant family in the small village of Takster, Tibet. This child was soon recognized as the reincarnation of the previous 13th Dalai Lama at the tender age of two in accordance with the Tibetan tradition. My mother, very, very kind-hearted, really very good mother. So therefore, we, her children, is grown up within that atmosphere. So that I think really makes difference. I think immense sort of effect. effect. Impact. After being recognized as the 14th Dalai Lama, the young boy was taken to Lhasa, where in 1940. At the age of five, he was officially installed as the spiritual leader of the people of Tibet and his formal education started. In 1950, due to the Chinese invasion of Tibet, His Holiness was officially enthroned as the temporal leader of six million people of Tibet at the age of 15, making him the youngest Dalai Lama. The next nine years, he worked hard to keep peace between the Tibetan people and Chinese army. However, the situation worsened and at last in 1959, His Holiness, along with his retinue, fled Tibet and took exile in India, where he later set up the government of Tibet in exile in Dharamsala, often referred to as Little Lhasa with the sole aim of resettling and preserving cultural traditions of the Tibetan people. I always consider myself as a one of the uh, human beings, uh, out of the seven billion human beings. We are the same, uh, mentally, emotionally, uh, physically, we are the same. And then most important, we everyone, want happy life. In his long journey of life, the Dalai Lama has spent the life of a true Bodhisattva committed to benefiting society. Uh, our existence is very much based on hope. No guarantee 
our future, something good, no guarantee. Hope means something good, something better. Therefore, once lost hope and completely demoralized, but then that mental attitude itself shortened our life. And also, you see, the, your physical health also then become difficult. So hopeful, always in spite of difficulties, always keep optimism. Oh. He has written numerous books and conducted hundreds of conferences, lectures and workshops at major university and institutions throughout the world discussing, engaging in wisdom, compassion, and more recently, environment sustainability. Known as an effective public speaker, he's often described as charismatic. Usually, you see, my you see, practice is something like this. One mosquito, say, one mosquito come, then if my mood is something quite, quite happy, then I usually you see, give some blood, you see, to the mosquito. Then you see, second time come, then more impatience. So sometimes I do like this, blow, blow out. Then third come, then sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Airplane, breakfast, very little. Uh, so I always carry bread in my, my bag. <laughs> so, looks as Dalai Lama was a holy bag. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but actually, inside some bread. Itne color se uske, Ishwar ke saman uske saamne taakte rehte hain. Aur sahi dharma purush wo hai, jisko taakne se hume taakat prapti ho. Aise ek urja nirmit karne wala aadmi, aapka थोड़ा भी परिचय हो जाए तो आप कहा कैसे पकड़ेगा कि मानो सालों से आपके साथ उसका घनिष्ठ संबंध है परिचय है इतना स्नेह और आदर देते हैं His message is always one of peace and compassion for people all over the world He has met many world leaders and has visited more than 70 countries During his travels abroad he has stressed the need for a better understanding of and respect among different faiths of the world. India, thousand years, I, uh, the, I think uh, more than 3,000 years, the concept of non-violence, concept of religious harmony, these are something I feel living example on this planet. Dalai Lama, Dharma Guru, लेकिन विश्व शांति की जब बात करते हैं सभी मजहबों को मिलाने की बात करते हैं तब दलाई लामा धर्मगुरु से हट करके एक बुद्ध पुरुष हो जाए। For his outstanding achievements and relentless work on peace, he has been bestowed with the Nobel Peace Prize. For his commitment to the creed of non-violence, Norway's Nobel Committee likened him to Mahatma Gandhi when it awarded its Peace Prize in 1989. I always see, consider myself as a one follower of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, as a, his non-violent sort of, sort of view or non-violent practice, uh, is something very, very relevant to today's world. Today, the Dalai Lama's role as an eminent Buddhist monk is universally acknowledged. People are drawn to his infectious personality and are increasingly responsive to his teachings and practices. His approach of reaching out the common ground for all religions, the quest for happiness, definitely makes him the greatest spiritual leader of our time. I always have one dream, that is, this century, the, within this century, the world truly become real happy human family. <laughs> Thank you.
for as long as space endures and for as long as living beings remain until then may i too abide to dispel the misery of the world may allah, may allah.